I was very excited to do this role. Uh, I'm very close with Jake Heggie, the composer, and I've done five productions of his Dead Men Walking. Uh, Jake and I have also done several recitals together of his songs, song work. Um, so I feel very connected to Jake as a composer and I understand his music. I feel I love singing his music. So to be cast in a role of a new opera that is living and breathing. I mean, Jake made revisions to this opera very recently, so we're getting new uh, versions of this piece as we're working and, and we're speaking with Jake too about what works and what doesn't work and asking him questions and it's such a gift to have a composer just kind of in your pocket basically to ask, well, what does this mean? How do we do this? It's a, it's a gift to be a part of a contemporary work where the composer is, is right there with you alongside you. The process is uh, such a different one. It's not something I have personal experience with. I don't know anybody who is from the Holocaust. I didn't have any, um, I, I, I had lost nobody, uh, you know. So to go there was to do the research, to really dive in and, and go down this wormhole of, um, about Auschwitz, about the Holocaust, about the Polish experience. Um, and it's hard, it's a, it's a hard subject to deal with. What's amazing is that when you focus it through the eyes of this one woman, and then you have all this incredibly beautiful music which just enhances her story, we have a pared down production where we're right with the audience. So really, nothing gets lost in the storytelling. Um, you get this very human experience, and it gets it, it goes from this large, horrible loss of humanity in the Holocaust down to one or two people, um, and you experience it in a different way because you see these people had stories of their own, their families, and um, it, it's a it's a difficult process to go through, but it really is satisfying on the other end because you can tell the story so profoundly to an audience who's really with you. How's that? Zosha, her name is Zosha. Um, my backstory that I created, because we don't have real backstory about who these people were, um, is that she, you know, maybe she's a little bit older than some of the characters in the story. She's a little bit more experienced. Maybe she's been in the camp longer. She's kind of the the group leader. Um, she kind of takes care of people. She's a real pragmatist. She's really earthy uh, and grounded, which is a really nice foil to Krisha, who is a bit more ethereal. Um, she lives in the world of poetry and and really Zosha is just trying to get by and make every day um, a day of survival. I used to be a dancer and, and any show that has dance I'm super happy about, which is funny because when I first w received the contract, the production manager told me that there were dancers in the show and I was like, what, what dancing are we going to be doing with the Holocaust? Um, what's amazing is that, you know, in this piece we find these d tiny glimmers of joy, which is so nice and I think tr probably very truthful that they had to find moments where they could tap into their humanity again. and and um, maybe recall a tune that they loved or a dance that they used to do it back at home and so we reference that in these moments and um, there's some fantasy scenes also where we appear as dancers and so it's so it's so fun and what it does is it l allows us to experience a gamut of emotions I mean we're just like at one end to the other so act one we're weeping and then act two we're in a club scene and um, feeling all the happiness and showing all this joy so by the end of rehearsal we're a bit exhausted. <laughs> <laughs>